Coaches, this is Coach Tall Guy. Uh, today I'm going to take some time to talk about some defensive principles. The first principle of defense we're going to address is the first defender. Now, the first defender's job is to immediately pressure the ball. Now, with young players, this can get a little difficult because the kids sometimes are a little bit confused as to who's going to pressure the ball. To make it simple, the person closest to the ball should be pressuring the ball immediately. Now when we talk about pressuring the ball, there's a way to do it correctly and then there's a way to do it not so well. Um, you'll notice with a lot of young players, they'll pressure the ball but they're running in, they're diving in, um, and then good players tend to like chop the ball, make a move, and, and then we're beat. So we really wanna address how we close down that space, how we put pressure on the ball, but how to do it appropriately so we're not diving in and getting beat. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about our body positioning on how we pressure the ball. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about where the ball is on the field as well. And that's going to de determine how we pressure the ball as well. But the main principle here is we want immediate pressure on the ball. We want to stop that penetration, that ball moving forward. All right. So I'm going to go through a few things. So bear with me, stick with this. Uh, we have our soccer ball here. Okay. So imagine. The ball is here, so we imagine that there's a player there. I immediately have to close down the space. Right now there's a lot of space, so I'm gonna explode, and I'm gonna close down that space. Now what we'll see very often though, is kids will come flying in with a tackle, they'll miss the ball, they'll get beat, or they're coming in what we call flat, all right? In this situation, this is in a great defensive positioning because now the player can beat me on either side, could potentially put the ball through my legs, which would be embarrassing. I put some pressure there, but I just have not done it correctly, all right? So to do it correctly, again, we want to pressure that ball as fast as we can. So I have space and I have distance. I got to close it down. I'm going to take long strides to close down the space, but as I get closer to the ball, I'm now going to hook my run and get low so that my body's at a 45 degree angle, all right? This is important. To get low, we want our knees bent because I have to be able to react, but more importantly, the angle, okay? More often than not as a player, you wanna try to force that player to their non-dominant foot. So in most cases, it's gonna be forcing that player to their left foot. Now players will learn that as the game goes on, but more often than not, we wanna put them on their strong foot, which is gonna be their left. So you notice how I'm low, my knees are bent. Now I'm making it easy on myself. I'm saying, hey, I'm not gonna let you beat me here. I'm gonna force you to go that way. So I'm making it a little bit more predictable. Notice I haven't stuck in, I'm not lunging in, I'm not flat like this. My body's angled, my knees are bent so I can move, all right? Forcing the ball one way, that's really important. So again, for players, we wanna pressure that ball as soon as possible. So we're gonna explode, then we get low, and we don't dive in. The biggest thing for young players is can they keep the player and the ball in front of them, all right? The minute they start diving in, that's when they're gonna get beat. Also, young players don't understand the concept of space. So again, we have to close that space down, hook our run, get low, force the player one way or the other, all right? If we can get our players to understand this concept of the first defender, their job, again, is to pressure the ball, force it one way, get low, don't dive in don't dive in that's huge for young players they're excited they want to win that ball but in their attempt to win the ball a good player just makes a little move and they're gone now let's talk a little bit about where the ball is okay so in this situation the ball is most is in the middle of the field okay so again I might know that player I'm gonna force him to their left or I might have a second defender here to help so I'm gonna force him to my left as well okay Maybe I have a second defender over here, so I might force them this way. But again, I'm not coming in flat, all right? Forcing them one way or the other. Now, for instance, if the ball was on the, on the sideline, okay, there's a couple different schools of thought. For our young players, force them to the sideline. 
use the sideline as an extra defender, okay? If a player dribbles that ball out of bounds, it's a turnover, it goes to our team. So encourage your players in those outsides or on those flanks, when they go to pressure that ball, get low, but force it to the sideline. Don't let them come back to the middle, okay? Use that sideline as a second defender for you. And plus, we're pushing that player further away from the goal. If we let them come back to the middle, now they've got an opportunity to find some passing lanes. It's a little bit harder to defend, all right? So definitely for our young players, let's try to force them to that sideline, use that second, that sideline as a second defender. Um, as players get older, they're playing more competitively, some coaches might actually encourage their teammates if the ball's out wide to force it in the middle because they have a lot more defenders in behind. Um, there's a lot more help in the middle. Um, so there's a little bit of school thought as the players get older. But again, for our young players, force them to that sideline. So thank you guys. Uh, if you could hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel here, uh, Coach Tall Guy. Um, I'll be putting up a variety of coaching tips throughout the season. Again, today we were talking about some of our defensive principles. That first principle is the first defender. Their job is to pressure the ball. And we do that by closing down the space, long strides. As we get closer to the ball, we get low, smaller strides. And then coaches like to call this hooking the run. So you're angling that player, forcing them. If we come in too fast, that's when we get beat. Always keep the player and the ball in front of you. That way you can block shots. That way you're low to defend. If we come flying in for that tackle, that's when we get beat, all right? So uh, hopefully this helps throughout your practices this season. Some of the things I like to use is just one of you to the ball, one of you to the ball. If you can ingrain in your players during scrimmages or practice time, that first defender is yelling, I got ball, I got ball, all right? Or I go ball, it's gonna send that message to the rest of the team like, yeah, I'm already pressuring it, the rest of you need to get in behind me and defend. Uh, as you'll see in a lot of young games, right? Little kids, you get that bunch mentality. Um, even at eight, nine, and 10, they're still bunching a lot because they're confused. They don't know who's going to the ball, who's that first defender. So they can make it real easy if I say, I got ball, I got ball, all right? Then everyone on the team knows that that player's got the ball, the rest of them can get in behind and defend. Hey, I hope you guys found this uh, helpful. Um, thanks for being part of our club and I'll talk to you later, bye.